Well, good morning again. It's good to see you. Now, as I tell you every time, this is still June the 4th for Glenn and I. You're going to be watching this, uh, I think, the 13th of June. So probably a lot's happened between those two dates. But uh, I hope that you continue to have a good week with your family. Uh, Kathy and I, we've been venturing out a little bit more and more, but we wear a mask wherever we go. And uh, like I told you last time, I have some good news. This will be June 20th, so actually if you're watching this on the 13th, it'll be next Sabbath. Uh, Shreveport is planning on having their first church service. And as I told you last week, we're going to start off with 11 o'clock service only. Uh, probably no Sabbath school for a few weeks. Probably around the 1st of July, we'll see how the virus numbers are going. And if we feel like we can, then we'll venture out into uh, some different Sabbath schools. But uh, just keep praying. And for those that are watching, yes, we will be requiring everyone wear a mask, just like we do in Texarkana. I, I know it's a pain, but folks, it's for your protection as well as our protection. So please, and if you don't have a mask, don't worry, I will have extra ones here. And as I told you last week, if you have not already got one of the uh, cleaning kits, we have plenty. And I just contact Glenn or myself and we'll make arrangements. Now, if you come down, I have extra items too that uh, we'll be happy to share with you. Uh, this particular time, these items are for our members uh, because I know it's a little late. We can start to get some cleaning supplies, but for there for a while, we couldn't get anything. So uh, <laughs> I have to confess something. Uh, you know, they're talking about the possibility of a second wave of this virus and come uh, fall, winter, second wave. I'm stocking up on toilet paper. <laughs> I don't want to be caught like last time. Anyway, you know, I had a, a member over in uh, Texarkana told me the other day they went to Sam's. And uh, there was a five pound Forget what, it wasn't a pot roast, but there was a five pound hunk of meat. I forget what they said. Anyway, it was $101. So being a vegetarian, I, did, I don't know. So I asked, well, what is that normally? And they said about $30. And Kathy told me she had read online where the meat supply is becoming less and less. Uh, and I, I, I laughed. I thought, well, Lord, now some of us are already vegetarians uh, you may be preparing the rest of the world to become vegetarians. I believe Jesus is about to come. Did you see that house there in Norway? In fact, there were several houses. A little, uh, what an island, but there was a section there that slid off into the ocean. Uh, four or five houses just went right down, and somebody was videoing it. It reminded me of what Ellen White said in the last days that some of the wicked cities, and she named a few there in California, but some of the wicked cities would slide off into the ocean. And uh, even though that was just probably two or three acres, but it shows you that it can happen. So, well, again, I wanna be, I wanna thank you for being faithful with returning your tithe and offerings. Again, you can uh, call Virginia Arnold there in Texarkana or to uh, Brandy here in Shreveport. And when we do return to church, we'll probably be taking up the offering as you leave out in the foyer. There'll be a, a little container of some sort to drop your offering. We won't be using our deacons for a while. Again, we're trying to keep people apart as much as possible. And since this is probably my last time to record a sermon without a congregation, uh, Renee will hopefully have all of the Revelation Seminar up so that you can watch the whole series. And folks, if time continues, I do plan to do a couple of series in 2021. Uh, one myself and 
uh, I mean, one myself here in Shreveport and one myself over in Texarkana. So uh, be praying. This might be, very possibly be, our last golden opportunity. So anyway, we're going to let Dave look at the one last coin. But before we look at that, I want to bring out my friend. Because he's going to talk about something he lost this week. Be right back. Well, good morning, Clyde. Good morning there, Pastor. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Did you have a good week? Yeah, sure did. But hey, I've got an exciting story to tell you. An exciting story to tell me? Yeah, something that happened this week. Okay, what happened? I lost my favorite coin. You lost your favorite coin? Yep. And that's exciting. Oh, no, not losing it. Finding it. You found it? Yeah. Let me tell you the story. All right. I got 10 silver dollars. Wow. Good collection. Yeah. And my favorite one, I couldn't find it the other day. I know it was there. I always count them, look at them, and my favorite one was gone. Well, what did you do? Well, I looked and looked and looked. No such look. So I got a flashlight. I got down my hands and, I don't have things to do them. No, wings. Yeah, I got down on my wings and feet, and looked and looked with the flashlight. Still, no coin. Well, what did you do then? What I should have done in the first place. Okay, what? I prayed. You prayed? Oh, yeah, that should always be the first thing you do. Yeah. I prayed, and then I felt impressed to get back down my wings and feet and look under your bed. Under my bed? You know, your bed. Okay? And there it was. It was under my bed? Yeah. I don't know how it got there, but there it was. Well, that's good. So I was so happy. I just had to tell you the story. You know, Clyde, I, I got a lot of stories, something very close to that, where I've lost my keys. Uh, I've lost, uh, I remember one time I lost the key to my tractor. Yeah. Could not find it. It was lost in the mud. It was really rainy that day. And I was about ready to go get a new uh, ignition key and ignition starter, all, the whole works. Yeah. Yeah. And I remembered to pray, and I prayed, and you know what? What? I found it. Ooh. Right, in mud where you couldn't. But you know what I've done today? What? I've lined all my lawnmower keys, tractor keys, with different color bands. So if I lose it, it'll be easy to see. Yeah, but you still need to pray. Yeah, I still need to pray. But uh, you know what, Clyde? What? That's what my sermon's about today. Your tractor key? No, 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 but I'm a tractor key about someone else that lost a coin, a special coin, and what they did to find it, and why they wanted to find it. Yep. Yeah. So I hope that the kids will listen to my sermon today, and I uh, hope you'll listen to it too, because it goes right along with your story. Great. So tell them goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, have a good Sabbath, and I can't wait to see you again over there. Oh, I missed you so much. Clyde, don't get on so emotional. Well, I have. well, I've missed them too, but I don't have to get so emotional. Okay. We'll see you soon, guys. Bye. Tell him bye. I have to admit, it will be nice to see your congregation back here in Shreveport. It's been very nice the last three weeks seeing a congregation there in Texarkana. But uh, last week, the, uh, we're in phase two, so we can have more people. I'm just praying more people will attend. I know some people are not ready to attend. That's fine. Some people don't want to attend because they got to wear a mask. Well, folks, I'm sorry, but we just have to be uh, safe on this and protect each other. So 
Just be, be patient with us. We're doing the best we can. But just remember, God is still in control. And it'll be good to be back in church. Well, I'd like to invite you to take your Bible. Turn with me to Luke 15, verse 10. Luke 15, verse 10. And it says, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, again we've come to you. We've opened your word and we've opened our hearts. And once more I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be accepted in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our sins return redeemed. Today we're going to continue our series in Luke 15 that we started a few weeks ago. And as I've said every time, these three parables here in Luke 15 are very important. The first sermon, we examined the first two verses of Luke 15, verses 1 and 2. And then last time we looked at the lost sheep, verses 4 through 7. Today we're going to look at the one lost coin. Like I told you last week, I still hope to finish Psalm 23 when we come back together. And uh, I think I have two more sermons to do. And then, but, but before we do Psalm 23, I'm going to do the third sermon called The Prodigal Son. Which, honestly, is probably the most... Uh, preached from of all three parables, the prodigal son. Well, I hope you've already read Luke 15, Christ Object Lessons, page 15, I mean chapters 15 and 16. Folks, it, it will help you understand these parables so much more if you'll just take the time. And if you've read them once, read them again. Now, during the first sermon, we discussed the tax collectors and the sinners, along with the Pharisees and scribes. We looked at those that drew near to Jesus to hear him. In the second sermon we looked at last week, we looked at the one lost sheep. Now, remember, there were, 90, there were 100 sheep. 99 still were at home. One wandered off. And we discovered that that one lost sheep was lost in the wilderness with no way of finding its way back home. But then we also noticed that Jesus is our shepherd. And because he's our shepherd, he's out looking for his lost sheep, which is you and me. Now, today we're going to look at the one lost coin. Now, please take note of what I'm about to say because it's very important. I'm going to come back to it in a moment. But in this second parable, and remember there's three. In this second parable, please take note that the coin is lost in the house. The first parable, the sheep was lost in the wilderness. But here, this coin's lost at home. So let's, let's continue reading the second parable. Going back to Luke 15, verses 8 to 10. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together to say, Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which, which I lost. Likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Remember now, she says right there, the peace which I, she, lost. Now you remember the first parable, Jesus starts off in verse 4 by saying, what man of you? But here, here he switches it. Here he says, are what woman? 
I guess you know that Jesus loved to use illustrations that appeal to both men and women. For example, here's a parable, Matthew 13, 33. Another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leaven. And then in Luke 17, 35, you know the parable here. It's two women will be grinded together. One will be taken and the other left. So using stories or parables, Jesus used them to speak to both men and women at the, his time. And I believe these same parables are used for us today. It was a common practice for Jesus. You may recall from our last sermon study, the owner of the sheep was moved both was moved with pity for the sheep and he was moved because of his own financial interest. But here in this parable, the element of pity is that the woman only had her own carelessness to blame for losing the coin. The sheep, the sheep becomes lost. The sheep wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. He wanders off from away from the rest of the flock. So the sheep could only blame itself. But here in this second parable, the coin is lost because the woman lost it. The coin could not blame itself. And her desire... Her desire to reclaim it was based entirely on her personal interest in the coin. The parable, like the first one, also emphasizes the value of a soul to God. Both parables stresses the fact that a lost sinner, a lost sinner is of so much value in the sight of God that God himself, the King James says, seeks diligently God seeks diligently until he finds the one who is lost now in verse 8 it says the woman lost only one coin one silver coin out of ten doesn't sound like a lot but you have to understand in those days one silver coin was an entire an entire day's wage. So as we go through this parable this morning, please keep in mind that the coin is worth an entire days of hard work. That'll help us to understand the value of the coin. Let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered how she lost the coin? Now while the story doesn't say for sure, we can only speculate so let's use our vivid imagination. Let's say that she's dusting. And it was time to dust the table where the silver coins are. So she takes the ten coins into her hand and she moves them to another place. She dusts. Then she goes to move the coins back. And that's when she discovers one of them is missing. I guess at this point we need to ask... Just what is this money to her? Is it her life saving? Could it be money she'd been saving to pay back a loan? Again, we're not told. But whatever the money is to her, we do know this. It was very important that she finds the one missing coin. She knows because of her carelessness. Her own carelessness that now the coin is missing. In fact, not like the sheep. The sheep knew it was lost. But the coin doesn't know it's lost. Doesn't know it's missing. Doesn't know someone is searching for it. The sheep was scared because it was lost. But the coin isn't scared. The coin is probably happy, content. Life is as normal as it can be to a coin. Now remember, the sheep 
was lost in the wild mountains or the wilderness, a place where there's hungry wolves. Or like in our next sermon, when we look at the lost son, we're going to find he's from a faraway country. But the coin is lost at home. A very familiar place. A very comfortable place. But now notice what the woman does when she discovers the coin's missing in verse 8. She lights a lamp and she sweeps the house. Ever wonder why she lights a lamp? It's obvious it's already daytime. How do I know that? Or the, the lamps would already have been lit. Or lit. Possibly she needed more light. Maybe the, the room was dimly lit. It's kind of like Clyde and his children's story a moment ago. He took a flashlight to look under a bed. Also, remember now, the coin's made of silver. And when a light goes over the silver, it probably glistened, glittered. Whatever the case is, folks, after she lights the candle, then she grabs her broom and she starts sweeping her house. Let me ask you, in those days, what sort of floor did the common people have? Of course, a dirt floor. So picture this. The coin is lost. It's in a poorly lit room. And it's lost on a dirt floor. So maybe now you can understand better why it was easy to lose the coin, but yet hard to find. So I believe if she had not been searching diligently, she may have never found that coin. But look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, And when she had found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. Somehow, with her candle and her broom, she finds that lost coin. Have you ever wanted to share a joyful moment with someone? Sure, we all have. You know, it's hard for me sometimes to refrain telling everyone that someone I've been studying with has just given their heart to Jesus. I want to shout it wherever I go. And that's, what, that's what's taking place here in this parable. She is so happy she's found her lost coin that she wants to share her joy with all of her friends and her neighbors. And what does the Bible say takes place in heaven when one lost sinner is found? Look at verse 10 again, our scripture. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Folks, heaven rejoices when one, when one person who is lost is found, repents, and accepts forgiveness. Someday, someday when we all get to heaven, I'm going down to God's local blockbuster video store or his red box, whatever he has. <laughs> And I'm going to check out the DVD, HD, Blu-ray. I'm going to check that DVD out entitled, The Day David Farmer Repented and Accepted Jesus. You see, what I want to see is not what I did. I want to see what took place in heaven. I want to see the angels doing Holy dancing, whatever that is. Because see, the one that was lost, me, was found. Okay, let's start summarizing this first two parables up. And see what we've learned so far. Let me begin by asking some questions. In the first parable that we looked at, the one lost sheep, here's the question. Where was the lost sheep at? Of course, the wilderness or in the mountains. 
In other words, the sheep was in the world. But now in the second parable, where is the coin lost? Again, in the house. In other words, we would say the coin is lost in the church. Does that come as a shock to you? What I'm asking, folks, is can a person, man or woman, can a person have their name on the church books, be very active in the church, a faithful tithe return, a solid Sabbath-keeping Christian, vegetarian, huh, I'll go one step farther, a vegan vegetarian, Eats only carrot cake. Can a, can a person be all this? And still be lost? And not only lost, but not even know they're lost. They think everything's great. I'm in church, I'm active, I'm doing all the right things. I got it made. In other words, they're comfortable where they are in their Christian walk. Folks, that is exactly what Jesus is teaching here in this second parable. Remember now, Jesus was speaking to the, to the tax collectors and the sinners there in verse 1. But then in verses 2 and 3, he's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes and the Pharisees were the leaders. They were the holy ones of the church. The deacons, the elders, deaconesses. They were the ones that everyone looked up to. You see, folks, I believe this parable is teaching us today in the year 2020 that we need to be careful and never, ever forget our own members. You know, we spend thousands of dollars taking the gospel to the world, and we should. That's partly what the first parable is about. That's what the first angel's message is all about. But this second parable is teaching that we need to watch within the church doors. And make sure none of our own members become lost. So, my advice, let's light some candles. And let's start praying. And let's look in love, in faith, for any of those lost outside the doors, but also within our doors. In other words, when we see one of our very own kind of go in the wrong direction. In Christ Object Lesson, page 197, I love this. She says, in this work, all the angels of heaven are ready to cooperate. All the resources, resources of heaven are at the command of those who are seeking to save the lost. Let's work with the angels. Let's not fight against them. Let's not make their job harder. Folks, they want us to come home more than we want to go. And I want to go pretty bad. I'm tired of all this that's happening around the world. And it's only going to get worse. To close, I want to share with you the history of how the song He Lives was written. The author's name was Pastor Alfred H. Ackley. Ackley. He was born January 21, 1887. Alfred became very musically gifted along as being a pastor. Well, one particular Easter Sunday morning in the year 1932, the pastor was getting dressed and shaving. 
getting ready to go to church, and he's listening to the radio, a special Easter broadcast. Good morning, the well-known free-thinking preacher began. It's Easter. But you know, folks, it really doesn't make any difference to me if Christ is risen or not. As far as I am concerned, his body could be as dust in, the, in some tomb. The main thing is, his truth goes marching on. Well, that pastor was furious. And he screams at the radio set, that's a lie. His wife heard him yelling at the radio. She said, what's wrong? And the pastor says, honey, did you hear what that good for nothing preacher just said? He said, it didn't matter whether Christ is risen or not. You see, the pastor knew the truth. The truth about the resurrection does matter. In fact, it was just a few weeks before this moment that this pastor was having a conversation with a young Jewish man. And the young Jewish man said, why should I worship a dead Jew? Pastor Ackley said, that's the whole point. He isn't dead. He's alive. Well, it wasn't long after his wife and his conversation about the preacher on the radio continued that the wife spoke up and she says listen Alfred it's time you did that which you do the best why don't you write a song about it and then maybe you'll feel better you'll have something that will go on telling the true story so that very night Pastor Ackley wrote out the words and composed the melody just as it appears in our hymnals today. It's going to be hard for me to read this without wanting to sing it, but I'm going to, trust me, you don't want to hear me sing it. He says, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. And folks, these words are still so true today. Jesus still lives today, but the question I close with is this. Is he living in your heart today? You need to answer that question. Before we look at the third and final parable, the prodigal son next week, we're going to look at the one that was from a faraway country that wasted his life. And what it took for him to go home. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father. Father, I know that there are some lost coins among us. Coins that don't even know they're lost. They're happy. They're content. They think because their name is on the church books, they have it made. Father, the time will come when you will say, I never knew you. And so I pray that each of us will wake up and realize of our own, we can do nothing. But because you went, you sought us, you found us, you claimed us. Only because of that will any of us ever be there. Father, forgive us when we have failed thee. Search our hearts. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope next time I see you, it's here in the church doors. God bless you and keep safe.